thanks for watching my video. My name's Eric, and today I'm going to show you how to make sriracha and honey cured pork belly, otherwise known as homemade bacon. Now, I have a lot of cooking and smoking videos. I encourage you to check them out on my YouTube channel. But my most popular one by far is the one I made with apple smoked pork belly, which is another version of homemade bacon. And uh, I've gotten so many comments on it and so many people have tried it and loved it and I appreciate all the love I'm getting from people out there. But today I'm going to show you a little spin on it. Uh, the apple smoked uh, bacon that I made had apple butter, cinnamon, nutmeg, kind of tasted like an apple pie. This one I'm going for a uh, hot and sweet mixture. Sriracha is a local hot sauce here uh, in Southern California. It's become very popular. Uh, it's got the little rooster on it. Uh, I would recommend using this if you can get your uh, hands on it. That's the hot and then of course the sweet is just regular old honey. And uh, the other main ingredients, real basic, kosher salt, regular white sugar, and then the secret ingredient whenever you're going to be curing any kind of bacon is the pig curing salt. And this uh, has sodium nitride in it. In a few of my other videos I pronounce it sodium nitri nitrate. And uh, I correct myself, it's sodium nitrite. Nitrite uh, <clears throat> is a chemical, you have to be careful when you use it. You want to use exactly the right amount because too much can actually hurt you because it, uh, it is a poison. Uh, but this is what you need to cure the meat. So what I picked up here at Sam's Club this morning is a beautiful skinless center pork belly. You can usually find these at your club stores around town now. Or if you don't have access to that, go to your local butcher. You want to look for uh, one that's between four and five pounds. This one I have is four and a half pounds. This is going to be perfect. And we're going to be doing it in a dry cure. There's two different types of cures. You can do dry, which is basically putting on some dry ingredients with a little bit of liquid and letting it sit in a bag for up to a week in the refrigerator. The wet cures is when you actually submerge the whole piece of meat in water with some spices and curing salts, but that takes much longer. You're usually having to cure those for two to three weeks uh, before they're ready. One of the advantages of using a dry cure cure is because you can get more flavor mixtures in there like I did with my last one, the apple uh, smoked uh, uh, bacon. And I'll leave a link below if you wanna check that out after you're done watching this one. Uh, but this one's gonna be able to adhere some of these hot and sweet flavors uh, by letting it do the dry cure. And of course it's much quicker, only seven days. So. Uh, let's get the ingredients mixed together and I'll show you how to get this prepared so we'll put it in the fridge for seven days and pretty soon we'll have some delicious bacon so I'll show you the next step right now all right guys here we are you want to take the pork belly rinse it off just let it air dry uh, blot it dry with a paper towel now we're gonna make this uh, dry cure we're gonna start off with a half a cup of kosher salt a half a cup of regular old cane sugar, white cane sugar. And here come the wet ingredients. We have a quarter cup of shiratsa hot sauce. Now it doesn't have to be shiratsa that you use, but you see shiratsa is a thicker. It's not like a liquidy hot sauce. So if you're going to substitute it, try to keep something with this general consistency. You don't want it all liquidy. You want it a little bit hot. And I really like shiratsa too because it's got a little bit of a of a garlic flavor okay and we're gonna end that with a half a cup of honey so this should be a good combination of hot and sweet the last ingredient is one teaspoon of the curing salt like I said, you don't want to go over a teaspoon because it could uh, affect the final product and it can be deadly. So one teaspoon of the curing salt. All right, there we go. I'm going to start mixing this all up. I'll be back in a minute here to show you how it looks like when we're all finished and show you the next step in just a second. All right, guys, I've been stirring it for a couple minutes. Kind of looks like a tomato paste, but certainly doesn't smell like it. It's a hot, spicy smell. Just want to make sure there's no clumps. One thing you want to do before we apply this, 
Uh, you know, you got the meat side, you don't need to do anything with that. But on the fat side here, you just want to scar it with a knife. You don't have to go too big. What we're doing here is just to try to get some of that flavorful cure down into the pork belly. So you don't want to actually cut it. You just want to score it like this along the top. Around maybe half inch or three quarter inch. Just like that. Let me show you how to apply this with little or no mess in just a second. Welcome back guys. So I got these two and a half gallon plastic bags. You can get these from your grocery store. I find this is the easiest and cleanest way to do this. You want to put the pork belly on the bottom of the bag with the fat side up. And then you're just going to kind of open it like this. This will keep it the least amount of mess as possible. Now you want to take a third of this liquid and pour it into the bag. Don't be worried if you pour in a little too much or a little too little. This isn't an exact science. And we're just going to uh, start moving this uh, dry cure across the pork belly. And of course we're going to do it on the other side as well. So let me continue doing this. I'll be back in a minute when it's done to show you how it should look like. All right, guys, I've taken the rest of that mixture and I've coated both sides. I sealed up the bag, removed the excess air. Now what you want to do is just massage it for a minute. Try to get that cure all over and on all the different sides. Now as this sits in the refrigerator for the next six to seven days, it's going to draw, draw out some of the moisture from the pork belly and you'll notice it start to take on more liquid. Now what you want to do is every day for the next six or seven days, seven days if you can do it, six days is the bare minimum, you want to go in just have a tray in the refrigerator. <clears throat> You're going to keep it in the, in the tray in the refrigerator and then once a day, you know, maybe when you come home from work or you wake up in the morning and get the creamer for your coffee out of the fridge, you're just going to spin it around. Massage it a little bit. You're just going to rotate it. That just makes uh, make sure that the cure is getting on both sides and getting soaked up by that meat. So not that complicated. So that's it. I'm going to stick this in the refrigerator. I'm going to turn it once a day for the next seven days. We'll be back in seven days. I'll take this out of the fridge and I'll show you the next step. See you then. Welcome back, guys. It's been exactly seven days, one week. I've just pulled out the pork belly. Uh, like I mentioned, I've been turning it over, kind of massaging it. One thing I want to show you before I pull it out of the bag is how much moisture or liquid has been pulled from this pork belly. Oops. Look at all this. Unbelievable. You'll also notice that it's got a much firmer touch, kind of like a, a cooked steak or something. So uh, let me uh, get this over to the sink. We'll remove it from the bag. We'll rinse it off real good. I'll show you the next step right now. All right, guys, we just want to remove it and we want to kind of rinse it clean. And pull this out. Oh. I cleaned out the sink and if you have a little wire rack you can put on the bottom, it makes it a little bit easier. All right, you just want to rinse it off with some cold water. And like I said earlier, it's much different consistency. It's definitely darker in color, as you can see, and it's much firmer. It's like a hard piece of meat now. It's not all loose like it was when it was in its raw state. So it's definitely cured. So let me show you the next step here in just a second. All right, guys, after you rinse it off, uh, you want to soak it in water for around an hour. Now this is optional. I've made this recipe a couple times before. And to me, after it's been sitting uh, in that uh, solution for the last week, the pork belly has absorbed a lot of salt. And I mean, although I like my bacon salty, I don't like it overpowering it. So by soaking it in water, uh, it helps draw out some of that salt. Now, if you're not sure, you can always slice a little piece off, fry it up in a pan and do a taste test. And then if it does taste too salty, go ahead and submerge it in water like I've done here. Um, you can see the water's already starting to discolor a little bit uh, from sucking out some of that salt. Uh, so you can every hour 
uh, slice off another little piece, taste it, and keep uh, soaking in the water in hour increments uh, until it's at the desired salt level that you like. For me personally, just soaking it at one additional hour uh, after you've rinsed it off in water is enough to remove the extra saltiness and still leave a little bit of salt flavor in the bacon because you, you know obviously you want your bacon to have a little bit of salt flavor. So I'm just going to let this sit. I'm going to go put it in the fridge in a, in a minute and let it sit there for an hour. But in the meantime, since I got an hour to kill, I'm going to do another beer review. This time I'm doing a, a beer uh, called Pomona Queen. It's a California Amber Lager. It's made by the Last Name Brewery Company out of Upland, California, which is probably around a half hour from where I live here in Southern California. It's a suburb of Los Angeles. Uh, I've never tried this before, but uh, what it says on their website is that it's a balanced beer with notes of nuts and toffee and a light hoppy finish. So let's see what we think of this. It certainly looks good. Not an overpowering smell. Let's give it a shot here. Cheers and looking forward to tomorrow when I get this thing on the smoker. Huh. Wow, it doesn't really have that strong of a taste at all. Well, you know, I've done uh, beer reviews with a lot of my uh, cooking videos, and this is the first time I'd have to say I'm a little disappointed. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's certainly better than any, you know, domestic uh, Miller or Coors or something like that, but I was looking for something with a little more flavor. This is very light. I can barely taste a, a very small amount of hops. It doesn't really have much flavor at all. Yeah, I mean, from the color of it, I was expecting a little bit more flavor. But, oh well. <clears throat> like I say, uh, even a bad beer is better than no beer. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and finish this. It's certainly better than nothing. But uh, I'm not that impressed. But uh, just so you guys know what it is again, it's the... Uh, uh, Pomona Queen beer out of the last name brewery out of Upland, California. 4.8% alcohol. Kind of tastes like a 4.8% alcohol. It's certainly kind of flat. You can tell the head from the beer has already disappeared. Yeah, I'm not that impressed, but I'll drink it. So I'll be back when I'm done with this beer after this is soaked for an hour, and I'll show you the next step uh, in a little bit. All right, guys, I had it soaking for an hour. I took it out. Uh, you want to put it on some kind of wire rack over something because some water is going to, you know, drain from this. You want to just blot it dry with a paper towel. You want to keep the fat side down because you want to get the top part here, the meat, uh, dried out. And uh, it's going to form a little sticky surface, a pedicle on top of the pork belly, which is going to allow the smoke to really adhere to this when I put it in the smoker tomorrow. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to put this in the fridge, just like it is right here, uh, in, on a tray of some sort to allow that water to drip down. And we're just going to keep it inside the fridge. Uh, and hopefully tomorrow it'll be a lot more dried out. A lot of this moisture will be gone. And then uh, it'll be ready to accept a nice dose of some smoke. So I'm going to put this in the fridge. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Uh, and... Uh, Pretty soon, we're going to have some delicious bacon. See you tomorrow. Welcome back, guys. Good morning. Uh, it's been sitting overnight, drying out in the fridge. You can see it's uh, much drier, and it is getting tacky to the touch. I'm going to let it sit out here for the next half hour, 45 minutes, while I get the smoker up to temperature. We're going to smoke this at around 190 degrees to 220, depending on where I can get it regulated, uh, as low as possible. We're going to try to bring the internal temperature up to 150 degrees, which will probably take anywhere between two and three hours. This particular time, I'm going against what I normally use, which is apple. I'm going to try some alder wood. This uh, has been recommended by a few people that have been smoking and say it's a mild wood like apple, uh, but a little less harsh. So 
I'm keeping an open mind. I'm going to try some alder wood. We'll see how it comes out. So I'll get the smoker fired up and uh, we'll be back to throw it in in just a few minutes. All right, guys, very rare occurrence here in Southern California. It's actually raining a little bit, but you know what? We never get enough, so I'm not going to complain. Certainly okay to continue to smoke. So I have the pork belly here. I got a thermometer in it. We're trying to bring it up to 150. I got a little drip tray underneath. I'm also smoking some salmon. I'll leave a link below if you want to check out my salmon. It's absolutely delicious. I got a, a video for that as well. Fill the tray with hot water. And I got the elderwood chips in the chip tray. And this thing is right at around 150 degrees right now. I'm going to try to keep it at 200 uh, or a little bit less, maybe 190, which would be great. And like I said, should take two to three hours, 150 internal temperature. So I'm going to go inside, uh, have a cup of coffee, and I'll check back on it uh, in an hour or so, add some more wood chips if I need to, and we'll go from there. See you in a little bit. All right, guys, it's been just about an hour. We got the bacon up to 112 degrees. It's starting to take on some color, as you can see. Uh, Salmon's not quite done. Normally with one burner, I'm able to maintain around 210, 220. Uh, I got one burner on now, and I think because of the rain and being a little chilly outside, at least uh, for us normally, it's hovering right at around 190 degrees, which is fine. It's going to allow me to smoke a little bit longer, so both my salmon and bacon take on a little bit more smoky flavor. So it's one hour. I just... Uh, Put a little bit more uh, wood chips in. I got a nice, this nice uh, blue smoke coming out, and uh, things are looking good. Smells wonderful. So that's the update. We'll be back when we pull these things off, probably within the next hour, hour and a half. I'm guessing. See you then. All right, guys. It's uh, up to 140, so we're 10 degrees away on that bacon. What I've done here is I've taken some honey and a few drops of the sriracha. I'm just going to glaze this uh, this pork belly with a little bit of this just to infuse some of those flavors back again before we uh, before it's ready to be finished. Well, let's take a look at it. It's looking good. All right. Let's get this open here. Oh, it's looking very good. Mm, smelling very good so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna take some of this uh, some of this uh, sauce I'm just gonna coat a little bit of that sauce on there you know I, I just want to add some of that flavor you know I soaked it in water so some of that flavor has gone away so I'm just going to coat the top of it. Like I said, it's not a whole lot. I just took, uh, oh, I don't know. You see how, how full with honey. Maybe a quarter cup of honey. And uh, took the shiratsa sauce and probably put 10 to 12 little drops of shiratsa. Mixed it all up together. I don't want to make it super hot because uh, my son is going to try it. So I just want to put a little bit of that sweet and hot flavors back in so that's it i'm gonna finish this up guys it's looking great and uh we're 10 degrees away so uh i'll be back shortly when this is all done all right guys it just went off we're exactly at 150 i'm gonna spot check it check out a couple uh other parts but look at it man it's gorgeous Woo -wee. Let's take a look here. Oh, man. Look at that beauty. All right, guys. I'm going to spot check the temperature. I think it's done. And then I'll uh, put it on a cooling rack. We'll let this cool down to room temperature. I'll be back in a second. We'll take a look at this inside. All right, guys. I just pulled it off. It's 150. Look at how beautiful that looks. Now, if you coat it with that honey shiracha, be careful to put it on some kind of rack because, as you can see, there's some sticky honey kind of dripping off the side of it. It's still very warm. So I'm just going to let this sit here for probably 20 minutes. I'm going to put it in the fridge. I'm going to let this cool down, 
for at least four or five hours before I attempt to slice into it. And it also gives a good opportunity for those flavors to kind of meld, have that smoke settle into the pork. But I am looking forward to slicing off some slices of this, frying it up in a cast iron skillet and giving it a try. So we'll be back a little later, guys. But I just wanted you to take a look at it once I took it off the smoker, man. It's looking wonderful. We'll be back in a minute. All right, guys, welcome back. I've had this cooling for around three hours in the fridge. I just took it out and I'm just slicing pieces. One thing I do have to invest in one day is a actual deli slicer. But I don't mind cutting it by hand because I can kind of make the pieces as thick or as thin as I like. Oh man, look at this, how beautiful this looks. I don't know if you guys can see that, but look at how wonderful. I'm gonna fry up some pieces right now. We'll be back in a second and uh, we'll see how these taste. All right, guys, here we are. I'm frying up some uh, pieces in a cast iron skillet. Smells wonderful. One thing you'll notice too, is there's not as much splatter. And I think that's because the store-bought bacon uh, they inject it with the cure and so it's got a lot of liquid inside and then when you uh, fry it It all gets really really hot and it splatters obviously this is going to splatter a little bit because there's fat involved, but Not as much as normal it smells wonderful. It smells more sweet than hot so But so far I'm pretty impressed. So I'm gonna continue to fry up some more pieces here and uh, Give it a taste test shortly but yeah, it looks good. Be back in a second. All right, guys, just showing you how it looks like. It's uh, frying up really well. And uh, it's looking delicious. So I'm going to drain this, put it on a piece of paper towel. And going to give it a shot here. My wife should be home any minute. And uh, I'll let you know how we like it. But it looks good. All right, guys, I have a few pieces here. Here's my son, Kyle, and my wife, Monica. We're all going to try a piece. Try a piece, Kyle. Tell me what you think. You too, Monica. Okay. Uh, mm. I wouldn't say like, it tastes like bacon. It's better than it. It's really good. It's got a lot of flavor. I taste the uh, sweetness mm. of the honey Imagine. and just a little bit of the sriracha in the background. It's not overpowering. So if you're afraid it might be too hot, it mm. isn't. Why? Well, it's very good. Oh. Wow. Uh, just came out better than I expected. Well, guys, thanks again for watching. Monkey. Please give the video a like. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to continue to do some cooking and smoking videos. So please subscribe, like the video, and we'll see you next time. Say bye, Kyle. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs>